Welcome everyone. On behalf of the National Transit Institute, I thank you for participating in the NTD Safety and Security Non-Rail Mode Reporting Webinar for 2019. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. We are pleased to have Ann Singleton, James Overbeek, and Stephen Pizulka as our presenters. Ann Singleton is a Senior Safety and Security Analyst for the NTD program since 2009. Ann has been involved with several FCA initiatives, <clears throat> such as the State Safety Oversight Program, the Commuter Rail Safety Study, and the Transit and Safety and Security Program in a variety of roles. Prior to Ann's work with FTA, she was a software instructor and database developer. James Overbeek joined the NTD team in 2015. He is a graduate of Randolph-Macon College and currently works as a validation analyst for the safety and security module of the National Transit Database. Stephen Bazalka joined the NTD team in January 2018. He is a graduate of James Madison University and is a validation analyst for the safety and security module of the National Transit Database, um, having made the transition from the annual module. Uh, today's webinar marks NTI's first use of the Zoom platform. So, Hooray, hope everyone is uh, on board and functioning properly, which would be nice. Um, hopefully this is a little simpler and more streamlined. Uh, the webinars will function similarly as in the past where Anne, James, and Stephen will present their information and there will be periodic breaks for questions. Um, instead of posing your questions in the chat box, uh, please use the Q&A box which uh, Andy Wexler, I see, already <laughs> found. Um, the Q&A box will allow everyone to see the questions without having to skim through uh, lines of chat. Um, if any questions do come up in the chat, I'll try to transfer them to the Q&A box as we go along. Um, as I mentioned, there's periodic stopping points for questions, but you can uh, kind of put them in there, I guess, at any time, and we'll just stop and answer them at those junctures. Uh, the link to the handout was included in the original emails. And if you don't have that anymore, I will paste the link in the chat box again for anyone uh, who missed it. I will now turn the presentation over to Anne. Thank you, Lori. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sorry, my controls were shifting to the next screen are not uh, working. And you have to request the share. Do you remember how to do that, or do you want me to just... Um, Okay, let me see here. Um, here, I'm giving you control. There. Thank you. Sorry, Juan. Bear with us. We're figuring things out. Okay. You should be able to transfer now. There you go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, sure. The goal of today's session is to familiarize uh, NTD reporters with the, with the safety and security reporting requirements and the individual reporting forms. We hope that the knowledge you gain today will make your job easier, and we sincerely appreciate your commitment to safety and security reporting. For those of you that report purchase transportation providers, uh, also known as PT in the system, uh, please share this presentation with them so that they are aware of what you're required to report to NTD. This presentation would also be helpful for those that provide data to you or your department for reporting. So today we'll show you how to access the NTD uh, system and navigate through the menus and forms. We'll discuss how setup is achieved, um, and we will review the safety and security CEO certification form, the SNS-20, the SNS-30 security configuration forms. We'll review the 2019 reporting clarifications and form changes, um, reporting on the SNS-50 non-major monthly summary forms, as well as reporting SNS-40 major events. As mentioned, James, Stephen, and I are your instructors for today. Uh, Joe Eldridge, NTD Project Manager, and Maggie Schilling, NTD Program Manager, will not be joining us today. Um, so as you see, here's our contact data, which we'll also show at the end of the session, so you'll be able to have another opportunity to jot down information. Your assigned safety analyst's contact information is also displayed within the NTD system uh, on the summary view in the safety and security reporting package, which I'll show you a little bit later on. Um, if you do not know who your analyst is, uh, please feel free to contact any of us for assistance. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, first, we'll have a brief overview of the NTD system, and then again, we'll discuss the website and accessing. I'm sorry, I don't seem to still have control. There we go. Uh, maybe there's a delay. <laughs> In 1974, uh, Congress established the National Transit Database Program as a means to collect information and statistics on transit systems in the United States. The first data was collected in 1979 with paper reports. Since then, the NTD has evolved into the nation's primary source of information and statistics on transit systems. All modes of transportation are included in the NTD data collection. Agencies that are recipients or beneficiaries of urbanized area formula fund, program funds, 5307 and 5311, are required to report data with some exceptions. Both public and private providers are encouraged to voluntarily report as this will increase the federal grant allocation to that urbanized area. All reporters designated as full reporters in the system are required to report monthly safety and security events meeting a threshold. Agencies designated as, as small systems or rural tribal reporters report safety and security data on an annual basis rather than monthly. Agencies who have received a reporting waiver due to a significant natural disaster are not required to report for the period of that waiver. The NTD data is used to provide industry performance reports to Congress and other federal agencies and departments and is used to factor federal funding allocations for UZAs, which was over $8 billion last year. The NTD data is also used to direct, support, or improve other FTA in program initiatives, such as the State Safety Oversight Program. NTD data is also used to a generate a variety, variety excuse me, of analyses of trends in, the sa in transit safety and security events. The safety and security data is published on a monthly basis and is available to the general public on the NTD webpage. This data is accessed by federal and state agencies, transit systems, media, or any other interested parties. Published data can be found on the NTD website under the NTD data link. I'll show you that in a little bit. There's two products there, the safety and security time series data and the safety and security uh, major only time series data. Data reported is validated and checked for accuracy by safety and security analysts who review each report that's submitted. The analyst will contact the NTD reporter for questions, late or incomplete reports, questionable data, missing or missing reports based on event notifications that we receive. We may also contact agencies for various special analyses we conduct throughout the year, such as our comparative analysis used to identify adverse trends and statistics. The various forms and reports do have deadlines. The SNS 50 monthly summaries are due on the last day of each month. For the previous month's data, for example, March data is due by the end of April. However, commuter rail modes and Alaska Railroad do not report on the SNS 50 monthly summary. The NTD system sends automated email reporting reminders to the safety contact on the 20th of each month. This is not a late notice. It's just a reminder to report. The NTD system sends automated late notices on the 1st and the 5th of the month when your data has not been submitted. Please note that a report that's been saved but not submitted is considered late. When late notices are sent, it's quite common for analysts to receive calls or emails from reporters saying that they know they did their data. So that may be true, but if it was not submitted, it will be considered late. So if you get a late notice, please check your, your reports and make sure that all have a submit date. On the 15th of the month, if data is still outstanding, a third notice will be sent by the analyst, um, him or herself. Uh, FTA may just choose to initiate delinquent reporter process at this point and add the agencies to the failure to report list. If there are extenuating circumstances why you cannot report, please be sure to contact your safety analyst. Failure to report required data can have severe consequences and could affect the program funding. A failure to report can be submitted by an analyst to FTA for a variety of reasons, again, such as delinquent reports, uh, if the CEO certification is more than 45 days late, eventual delinquent reports, incomplete data, and so forth. So NTD website access. Your username and your e uh, is your email address in all lowercase letters. 
the agency's user manager establishes a person's user role within the system. The user manager is also the point of contact if you need to have your user role changed or your email address or phone number changes. There are six access levels for reporting in NTD. The CEO, CEO delegate, and NTD contacts have the highest level of access and full functionality to include NTD annual forms, monthly ridership, and safety and security data. The main difference between the two CEO accesses and the NTD contacts is that CEOs and delegates can also submit the, the annual certification form. NTD editors, shown only as editor in the system, can edit all annual forms and can submit monthly ridership and safety and security forms. The safety contact can create, edit, delete, save, and submit safety forms. They have full access to safety forms. However, the safety uh, person cannot change annual uh, data or monthly ridership forms. The safety viewer can create, aid, edit, and save, but does not have a submit button, and viewers can only view data. A person must be uniquely identified in the system in only one role. The designated contacts are responsible for reporting data accurately and responding to questions about submitted data. Automated emails, such as reminders and late notices, are sent to the safety contact. If there's no safety contact, these are then sent on to the NTD contact. The email address listed as the last modified user, which again you'll see in a moment, will receive notices of forms that are returned for questions uh, or changes. Users can change the password as often as they like, but the system requires a new password every 60 days. Password must, passwords must contain 12 to 20 characters, comprised of at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one number, and or a special character, any three out of the four. If a user ID has not been used for 60 days, the system will lock that user ID. If you get locked out, click on the reset password link located beneath where you enter in your login. You can also, if you've forgotten your password, you could also see a similar option there for forgot password. Um, if you still have further assist that need further assistance after a lockout, uh, you can certainly contact the NTD help desk or your safety analyst. So the National Transit Database is accessed from the Federal Transit Administration's website. And this is a snapshot of the NTD homepage on the FTA website. Uh, please notice that the link on the right hand side to the NTD reporting tool, this is where you go in to report data. On the left-hand side, you'll notice there are several links, which we're going to go over directly. So the first of these links is called About the NTD, which contains an overview of the NTD program, contact information, and help desk contact information. The NTD data section provides access to, to Tive Series products for historical and current annual data, monthly ridership data, and safety st and security statistical information. The SNS time series is often used for peer comparisons, as we mentioned just a few moments ago. Under the reference materials, you'll find the NTD glossary, the policy manuals, inter uh, the uh, quick reference guides, uh, information on training and conferences, presentations, webinars, as well as an explanation of all of the forms used in NTD reporting. So when you're accessing into the system, after you've clicked on that NTD reporting link, the screen that you see here, the snapshot you see on the left, is what comes up first. And once you click on the Agree, then the next box pops up where you can put in your uh, login and your password. And here you'll see there's a Forgot Password option, uh, or there could be a Reset option uh, here instead. So once you logged in, this is the first screen that you would see. And you'll notice across the top in the blue band, there are several menu options. So the first menu option, and this is that default screen, is the news menu option. Here's, your, here's where you'll find a variety of announcements and items of interest. The next menu option is the tasks menu, which shows you how many tasks are in your queue. Tasks are things that you need to do. For example, one of the tasks you may have is to manage any pending or incomplete safety and security reports. 
the records menu option is where you're going to go most of the time. This is where you access the safety and security reporting packages. The rec reports tab will display reports that are available to you. One such report would be the historical lookup report to view safety and security data that you've reported in prior years. In 2017, we launched a new report named the Rate Compared to Industry Rate Report, which will compare your agency's incident, injury, and fatality rate against the industry average. And then finally, the action menu option is where is, uh, items can be, new users can be added in addition to a few other user functions. Okay, so first we're going to review the setup and a little bit more navigation within NTD. Safety and security packages are automatically generated at the commencement of a new calendar year based on the agency's previous reporting status. So if you were a full reporter in the last year, you'll have a safety package launch in the new year. Modes and types of services available in the safety module are determined by the agency's P20 profile form. If you see any unexpected changes to the modes or types of service, uh, contact the person in your agency who submits annual reporting data. If you do not know who that is, you can contact your safety analyst and we can look into to who that contact would be. Uh, please do not attempt to modify the P20 profile as any modal changes there can affect all aspects of reporting, not just safety and security as well, and it could cause data to be deleted. The safety packages give you access to all of the safety and security reporting forms. So again, the CEO certification form is submitted annually to certify data reported for the prior year. The SNS 30 security configuration forms report your security personnel. Um, access to create and edit SNS 40 major incident reports and the SNS 50 non-major monthly sort summary report forms um, for each month uh, through the, the current, through this point in the year. So you, you'll see these forms generate as each month becomes available. As I mentioned on the records tab, that's where you'll find the safety and security reporting packages. I'm sorry, I think I'm advancing the wrong way. There we go. I apologize. Okay, so once you click on the NTD safety package, um, you'll be presented with the years that are available. Uh, as you probably know, if you look in the system right now, you have three years available, but that will soon change, and you'll be down to 2019 and 2018 reporting years. Excuse me, I went too far. Um, when you complete those steps, the safety and security summary view, oops, I did go too far, I apologize. Uh, I don't know if somebody else is controlling things on me. Uh, I promise I'm not touching it. <laughs> it's Well, I'm going to the left and it's going to the right, so I don't. Um, can you use the little ghost ones on the bottom? There's a left I, and a right down there by where it says 32. See, I don't see that. Let me, no, let me try no, I see changing them. my view. I apologize, everyone. No, no, oh, now I, I, I can now I've got them. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me back up to where... I was. Okay. Well, there we are. <laughs> I apologize, everyone. Um, all right. So once you get into the package, the safety summary view or the landing page is the first thing that you see. Uh, so you'll notice across the top you have your uh, NTD agency number and the name of your agency, uh, your safety contacts, uh, email address, and uh, a name will be available. It says not available right there because this is just a test screen. Uh, but normally you would see the validation analyst's name and information there um, and the fiscal year report that you're reporting in. Uh, below that, you see the form name filter box. Uh, with this is the long box with the, uh, with the arrow here so that you can limit what type of reports you want to view uh, in the table below. And within that table below, you can sort by all of the columns that are available. Um, to access your the particular forms you want to see. Okay, um, so the 
The next, uh, excuse me, one other thing I meant to show you, one other thing. Up here on the right-hand side, this first uh, summary view or landing page, you can't actually open any reports or anything from this point. You're only viewing what you've done. If you actually want to do any safety and security reporting or editing, you must click on the blue button at the top where it says NTD Safety Forms. Okay. <clears throat> um, Again, here on the dashboard, the dashboard looks very similar. I'm going to show you in just a minute. But the same functionality is there. You can use the form name filter box to filter what reports you, and forms you'd like to see. You can also sort all of the columns, as we've already discussed. And as you'll see in just a moment, when you uh, are on that view, the form names appear in the blue link on the left-hand side, which fits just an FNS 40. It'll also show you the uh, event number. Be sure to click on closed when you're finished using the screen. It may leave you a task if you don't. So here you can see where you can file a new SNS 40, and you click on these blue links to open the form that you want to work with. OK, so um, we're stopping for questions at this point. And uh, because you're using the Q&A box, uh, we're just going to continue on, and you can continue to ask questions in your Q&A box, and we'll answer them as we go along. Someone's covering that box as we go. So at this point, I'm going to turn this over to James. Oh, I guess I have to ch change the... Uh... Thank you, Ann. Uh, that concludes the navigation, so we're now going to move on to the SNS-20 Safety and Security CEO form. Okay, the SNS-20 CEO certification form. Uh, the CEO or his or her designee confirmed the accuracy of the major and non-major safety and security data for the previous calendar year. The form becomes available on January 15th in the previous year's safety package when the new year launches. The form automatically calculates data from submitted reports for the year. Unsubmitted data is not included. Unsubmitted data includes reports that have only been saved and obviously not submitted. Uh, the form is due by the end of February of the, following me, of the following year, and only the CEO or CEO delegate accounts can confirm or can submit the form. Reporters should review their data to ensure it matches the data in the SNS-20. Agencies should also use any in-house reports available to help verify the data. The historical lookup report on the reports tab within the NTD system may be helpful as well as it shows incident counts by month. The data does not match. Check to ensure that all safety reports are submitted. Once again, unsubmitted reports are not included. You may add or delete SNS 40s or edit SNS 50 data, and the SNS 20 will automatically recalculate the numbers. Remember to always notify your safety analyst if you delete any SNS-50 data or SNS-40 reports. Your CEO will check the confirm box adjacent to the data. Then the CEO can click on submit. Once the form is submitted, it cannot be resubmitted, but the form auto-calculates each time it is opened. If you are not the CEO or CEO delegate, you will not have a submit button on this form. This is a snapshot of the SNS-20 CEO certification form. Please notice that the CEO name and title shown in this screenshot of our test database uh, does not reflect actual data reported by an agency. And then this will uh, conclude the SNS-20 form. Uh, the SNS-30. The SNS-30 security configuration form collects the number and type of security personnel employed or contracted by your agency. The SNS-30 form is completed once at the beginning of the calendar year, and you are not required to update this form again during the year. All SNS-30s must be completed and submitted to enable reporting. 
If you cannot create or edit an SNS 40 or 50, it's because one or more SNS 30s is not submitted. Also, if your agency adds a new mode during the year, you will need to complete the SNS 30 before any other SNS 40s or 50s can be completed. This is a snapshot of the SNS-30 security configuration form. Again, this does not represent actual data for the agency shown. Notice you have a place to enter the primary number of security personnel and the total number of security personnel, which is the primary and secondary added together. Do not leave either of these bl boxes blank. Below is a list of seven types for security personnel with two columns to identify the type as primary or secondary. The primary security personnel is the force that responds to incidents in or on transit controlled property or is assigned to patrol agency property. For the use of local police non-contracted, use a count of zero. Not sure what's going on here. I can't get it to change. Um, James, you want it on number 40? Is that the problem? Is that where yeah, we are? Yeah, I can't. Okay. Yep. What's that? I don't know what happened, but there you are. Thank you. Sure. Uh, the secondary security force is the one or ones that occasionally respond or respond when primary force requires assistance. Again, for the use of local police non-contracted, use a count of zero. Uh, the number of personnel is reported in full-time equivalent hours. So one FTE equals one person working a 40-hour week, or 2,080 hours per year. Prorate the number of personnel if the person works only part-time providing transit security, or they provide security for more than one mode. One SS30 is completed for each mode. Be careful not to double count personnel. Totaling line two from each SNS-30 form should equal the total number of personnel for your whole agency. MBPT mode, the total number is 1.5. LRDO mode, the total number is 3.0. And for DRDO mode, the total number is 0.5. This means the total security force for the agency would be five full-time equivalents. If your security force covers multiple modes, you may use any reasonable method for determining FTEs. That may be modal ridership or the number of employees covering a mode. If an agency contracts for security and pays a monthly fee based on services used, they should determine FTE based on the previous year's total hours worked. NTD allows for only one pers primary personnel type. If your agency has more than one type of security personnel that considers its primary, report the security force with the largest number of personnel as the primary and the smaller force as secondary. For further information on the SNS-30, please see the Safety and Security Policy Manual or Safety and Security Internet Reporting Manual on the NTD website or ask your analyst for assistance. This concludes the review of the SNS-30 form. Uh, we do have a few changes for 2019.
Uh, the first change is a clarification pertaining to attempted suicides. Uh, the definition of attempted suicide has changed as shown. Uh, the attempt of the act and the intent to inflict self-harm must be accounted for by a third party. Um, so please be ensure to include all corroborating information in the event description. Um, additionally, there was no clear attempt and a person was transported only for mental health evaluation. This is reported on the non-major monthly summary report. So this will be an SNS 50. I mentioned this as we discussed attempted suicide since we received reports of attempted suicide where the person only stated they wanted to harm themselves, yet there was no actual attempt. Um, we also have some form changes. Uh, the first form change is a threshold question on setup screen two. The question was, were transit vehicles involved in this event? It has been changed to read, were transit revenue vehicles involved in this event? This change is designed to help the reporter determine if the event should be reported as a transit collision or as a non-transit collision that does not in involve a revenue vehicle. We will touch more on this in the high-level clarifications. We also changed the question regarding towed vehicles from, did this collision result in a tow away, to, did this collision result in a tow away due to disabling damage? For clarity, uh, these are for clarity since towways are not always due to damage. We also changed the artificial lighting selection on the collision information forms to indoors. This was a common pitfall where reporters would choose artificial lighting when reporting that street lights were on when the intent was to uh, capture that the event occurred indoors. Uh, we had added two new options to the basic information screen when reporting a collision. You'll see there is now a checkbox for suicide and attempted suicide. This is used to capture suicide and attempted suicide on, an, on the event level rather than collecting only the number of related attempted suicide injuries or suicide fatalities. Um, for rail modes, this allows us to close the gap so we can capture attempted suicide when the individual is not transported, um, but we'll talk about those on Thursday on the rail uh, webinar. Um, you'll want to check the appropriate box on the basic information screen and also on the corresponding injury or fatality form later in the report. Um, attempted suicide and suicide not involving impact with a transit vehicle have long been collected on the personal security form. However, these options were removed in 2016 when we started capturing them on the collision form where applicable. We have added these options back to the personal security form, so you'll no longer have to report these under the other personal security event option located on the same form. Again, check the related box on the injury or fatality form for the individual. Non-transit collisions. Some of you may not be familiar with non-transit collision events. A non-transit collision is one that does not involve a transit revenue vehicle, whether in service or not, yet occurs on transit property and meets a reporting threshold. For example, a car in a transit parking lot strikes a person or vehicle causing injury, or a maintenance vehicle collides with anything other than a revenue vehicle on transit property. On the non-transit collision event form, we have added a new location of non-revenue facility. This selection would also be used if the non-revenue location is not actually a facility, such as the yard. Also, we changed the wording to the location option parking facility to read revenue facility parking facility to match similar selections on other forms. Additionally, we've added a new collision with selection of non-revenue vehicle you would select this option if the event involved a non-revenue maintenance or service vehicle. For example, if a maintenance vehicle collided with an object 
on transit property resulting in a threshold, you would report the collision with as non-revenue vehicle. On a side note, you may have already noticed some internal validation checks and there will be a few more during the year. These validation checks may give a warning that you, are, that you have conflicting data or may default to a certain selections based on other selections made to prevent incorrect reporting. This will help to reduce the number of reports returned for common pitfalls. We will now look at non-major reporting. The definition of a reportable event is a safety or security event occurring on transit right of way or, or infrastructure at a transit revenue facility, at a maintenance facility, during transit related maintenance activity or involving a transit revenue vehicle. These safety events must meet the single injury only threshold and are related to falls, electric shock, etc. Uh, multiple injury incidents are bumped up to a major report. The SNS 50 form also collects the number of non-major fires where there was not an evacuation, injuries, fatalities, or substantial damage, but that still required suppression. Some exclusion, most applicable to the non-major events, are events occurring at bus stops or shelters, not on transit-owned property unless boarding or lighting. Uh, and OSHA events occurring in administrative buildings. The form is automatically generated for each mode and type of service at the beginning of each month. This form is required to be completed even if there was a major event for the month as they capture different event types and even if there's no data to report for the month. To recap, for submitting other safety events, you are entering the number of occurrences and the matching number of injured parties. Remember that injured means that they were transported away from the scene for medical attention regardless of whether they appear injured or not. Do not include people who were not transported away from the scene for medical attention. Here are several examples of injuries reported on the SNS-50. A passenger is thrown out of a seat due to a bus maneuver and was transported from the scene. Improper wheelchair securement and rider is injured and transported for treatment. Transit vehicle door closing on an arm, leg, backpack, or clothing and the, tr and the person is transported for treatment. Or a person walking into the side of a stopped vehicle and is injured. This is considered a fall because the vehicle was not moving. Uh, and here's a snapshot of the SNS-50 monthly summary report form. Uh, two of the categories for injuries on the SNS form relate to securement issues. Securement issues are those related to an injury resulting from improper securement of a mobility device such as a wheelchair or scooter. So they are reported as other in-vehicle securement issue. The other categories for other in vehicle, not a securement issue. These are trips, slips while on the vehicle or for being thrown from a seat during a vehicle maneuver. Again, if there's an undocumented attempted suicide and the person is transported for mental health, this is reported on the SNS 50. If no events occurred for a mode and month, Open the appropriate SNS-50 form and choose the checkbox adjacent to no data to report, then save and submit the report. Remember, do not include injuries to collision or any other major event type. Again, reports are due at the end of the following month and must be completed and submitted by the due date to avoid an automatic late notice. The SNS-50 can be modified at any time. Some reporters like to enter events as they occur during the month. For these reporters, they can modify the form and save and close the form after each change. Your validation analyst reviews each report for accuracy. If we have any questions, we may return the report to you, call or email you with our concern. If the return feature is used, the user ID under the last modified user column will receive the email. 
This is a snapshot of a test SNS-30 with an analyst comment or question. So not only do you receive an email, but when you open the report, you will be able to see our question or concern there as well. This new format shows a timestamp for each time a form is returned, and the reporter may enter comments, though not required, and the form shows the current status, which could be submitted, returned, or approved. This section will appear the same way on the SNS-50 and SNS-40 forms as well. Uh, once again, we'll uh, stop here for a brief moment. Uh, now's the time to ask any questions uh, in the question and answer box. Um, but as Ann mentioned earlier, we move, we'll move on uh, shortly. Uh, I will now turn this over to Stephen. Thank you, James. Uh, let's take a look at major event reporting. So let's discuss the applicability and reporting thresholds in more detail. A reportable event is a safety or security event occurring on transit right of way or infrastructure at a transit revenue facility, at a maintenance facility or rail yard, during a transit related maintenance activity or involving a transit revenue vehicle and meets a reporting threshold. The exclusions have not changed. Events that occur off transit property where affected persons, vehicles or objects come to rest on transit property after the event. OSHA events in administration buildings, death from illness or natural causes, maintenance vehicle collisions while going to or from the related maintenance work, or collisions involving a supervisor or transit police vehicle while operating on public roads. Um, the following are uh, thresholds. Uh, fatality, including suicides, confirmed with, within 30 days. One or more persons immediately transported for medical attention. Property damage equal to or exceeding $25,000. Evacuations of a transit facility or vehicle for life safety reasons. Or collisions involving a transit roadway, roadway revenue vehicle, which results in either the transit roadway vehicle or a non-transit roadway vehicle being towed away from the scene regardless of the severity of the damage. Here are a few examples of events that are reportable to NTD. Two people who are standing still when the transit vehicle starts moving fall and are injured. If a deadheading or out of service vehicle is involved in collision or there is a fire in a bus garage meeting a reporting threshold, these are reportable. Maintenance related activities are included in reporting. Here you see a few examples of maintenance related activities that are reportable. Mechanic falls into the pit resulting in a fatality. Maintenance employee hit by a vehicle in the yard and is injured. Less severe injuries to maintenance workers are captured on the SNS 50 monthly summary report along with non-major injuries to passengers and patrons. Now we have some examples of events that are not reportable. Employee injured on a city street or other property that is not transit owned property. Events at bus stops that are not on transit owned property and are not reportable unless the event involves a transit vehicle or boarding a lighting a vehicle such as a person is waiting at a bus stop and is hit by a car that is not reportable since the person was not on transit control property. An assault or robbery that occurs if the person is boarding a lighting at the time. So part of the event definition stating involving a transit revenue vehicle. However, NTD also collects non-transit collisions collision incidents such as an accident in the transit parking lot that meets a threshold. A few examples are private vehicles collide, a private vehicle collides with pedestrian or vehicle 
requiring immediate transport for medical treatment. Private vehicle collides with transit property, such as a station resulting in total damage of $25,000 or more or any other threshold. A fatality is a death confirmed within 30 days of transit-related events. This includes transit-related suicides. Please do not include deaths resulting from illness or natural causes or, or found deceased or persons found deceased on transit property where it is not the result of a collision or suicide. An injured person is a person transported immediately away from the scene for medical attention. This includes transport by ambulance and transport by private vehicle. However, a person walking away from the scene for medical attention is not considered injured. General rule of thumb, if a person is transported, report it. Please note, the injury thresholds are different between rail and non-rail modes. For information on rail modes, please attend the training webinar, consult the policy manual, or other guidance. A little further clarification on injuries. Medical attention must be sought without delay after the event. Medical care sought hours or days after an event does not meet threshold and are not included. Medical attention must be administered at a location other, must, other than where the event occurred, meaning that minor first aid given at the scene are not considered injured. Medical attention due to illness should not be reported. For example, a passenger on a bus has a seizure and is transported to the hospital. Property damage threshold. Events with total actual or estimated property damage equal to or exceeding $25,000 are reportable. Property damage includes transit vehicle and non-transit vehicle damage, damage to transit stations, bus stop signs, and shelters if applicable. The cost of non-transit property, for example, private property, buildings and fences, is included and also the cost of clearing the wreckage. NTD only requires general or ballpark estimates, and you may use a variety of methods for estimating. Blue book values, repair amounts or insurance estimates, establish standard property damage estimates for specific event types or severity of damage. Many transit agencies create a list of standardized costs, or these estimates may be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Estimated damage excludes personal property, such as laptops, cell phones, investigation costs, medical claims, or litigation. Property damage must always be reported on the SNS-40, regardless of amount, including zero damage. If the cost is confirmed as zero, please enter a statement in the event description, otherwise the analyst will return the report requesting such a statement. If there is a collision involving a transit roadway revenue vehicle which results in either the transit vehicle or a non-transit roadway vehicle being towed, the event is automatically reportable regardless of any other threshold. This is limited to roadway vehicles and therefore excludes ferry boats and trains. For example, a transit bus and a car collide. There are no injuries or fatalities and property damage is only $1,000, but the car is towed from the scene the event is reportable. The towaway is not based on the severity of the damage. If a roadway vehicle is towed, it is reportable. All evacuations for life safety reasons are reportable, including or directed or customer self-evacuations. Self-evacuations are where customers vacate the property without direction of the transit agency or other authority. Some examples of a life safety reason is suspicious packages, bomb threats, a smoke event, fire, fuel, fuel fumes, noxious odors, or a person with a weapon on a transit vehicle. If a bus has a transmission problem and the passengers are evacuated to the sidewalk or shoulder, 
the transmission problem is not a potentially unsafe situation and is therefore not reportable. As a reminder, to create a major event report, navigate to the records menu option, then choose my NTD safety packages link and choose the calendar year you want to report in. Click on the NTD safety forms button located in the upper right corner to access the dashboard. To add a new report, just click on the File New SNS 40 button. If you have an event to report that includes two or more transit modes from your agency, how do you choose which mode to report under? If the event involved your rail mode and a non-rail mode, choose rail. For example, one of your light rail vehicles and one of your buses collide. Report the incident only once under the light rail mode. If the event is between two non-rail modes, use the predominant use rule, which is typically based on ridership. For example, if a bus and a paratransit vehicle collide, report the event under the bus mode since it has higher ridership. The first two screens will act as a wizard to help determine if the event meets the threshold. Screen 1 captures the date of the event, and the mode and the type of service, and the event type. This is a snapshot of setup screen 1. Setup screen 1 event types. The first and most common is a collision. This includes suicides or attempted suicides where there is vehicle impact. For an event to be considered a fire, there must be flame suppression. Non-fire smoke events or the smell of something burning which meets another threshold are reported as other safety events. For an event to be considered a hazmat situation, it only has to meet a threshold, but the situation, it not only has to meet a threshold, but the situation would have to have to have required specialized cleanup, such as a hazmat team. Acts of God refer to acts of nature, such as hurricanes, flood, tornadoes, snow, and ice storms. There are two categories of security events. There are system security events such as arson, bomb threats, burglary, suspicious packages, vandalism, etc. Basically, they are events that affect the transit system. And personal security events such as assault, robbery, homicide, rape, larceny that affect one or more persons. This includes suicide or attempted suicide that does not involve contact with a transit vehicle. Just as with the other event types, the event must meet a threshold. And finally, the last event type is other safety events. These events are those that don't fit the other categories but meet a reporting threshold. This might be an evacuation due to smoke or a fall resulting in a fatality. You will notice that injuries of two or more people has an asterisk. For an other safety event, two or more injuries are required if that is the only threshold. Therefore, if there is only one injury, then another threshold must exist, such as a fatality or an evacuation. The second setup screen asks you a series of questions, some of which are based on the mode and or type of event you are reporting. This is to determine the reportability of the event and the subforms that need to be generated. This is only a list that we will cover each in more detail. First is the number of injuries and or fatalities. The total estimated property damage amount the screen asks about the evacuation threshold question. If the event is a collision, then you are, to, you are also asked the tow-away threshold question. You will also be asked if transit revenue vehicles were involved, which determines if this is a transit or non-transit collision. This is a snapshot of setup screen two for non-rail mode collision. As I mentioned, if you choose collision 
on screen one, then screen two captures if there were a transit revenue vehicles involved in the event. Select yes if this is true, which includes purchase transportation vehicles as a transit vehicle since you are reporting since you are reporting for this service. You would select no when the collision involves a private vehicle on transit property or a transit non-revenue vehicle collision occurs on transit property. These are typically maintenance vehicle collisions that meet a threshold. Based on the selection you have made and questions you have answered, the system will respond accordingly. If the event is reportable as a major event, the basic information screen will appear. If the event is not reportable as a major event, the system will generate a message that the event is not reportable and ask you if you want to continue. At this point, you can edit the selections on setup screen two in case you answered a question incorrectly, which may have made the event seem not reportable. If the event meets the criteria for a major event, the basic information screen will appear next. The basic information screen displays the date you already selected. When entering the time, be sure to use AM or PM designation, even if you use military or 24-hour clock format, the approximate or actual location of the event. The geographic location, longitude, and latitude is required. You are permitted to enter numbers, a decimal point, and a negative symbol for the longitude. Please use a minimum of four decimal places. If you do not have the coordinates, you can use a variety of internet resources. One such site is latlong.net. This is a snapshot of the latlong.net site if you choose to use it. As you can see, there is a box to enter the physical address or the station name or mile post. And the system will display the coordinates in the latitude and longitude boxes. The basic information screen also captures the event description. The description should be concise but descriptive so that the analyst can understand what occurred, how it occurred, and should include the number and type of injuries or any fatalities, but please do not include personal data such as names and license numbers. Also, please refrain from using codes such as IV to refer to a vehicle or from including the transit vehicle as vehicle one or vehicle two. The analyst has to determine who hit whom and how, and not everyone refers to vehicle one as the transit vehicle. Notice this description clearly identifies the transit vehicle. The description box can hold 2,000 characters. If you exceed the 2,000 character limit, when you click on next, a message will pop up that you exceeded the limit and will not be able to continue to the next screen until you reduce the number of characters. Here we have provided an example of a comprehensive narrative. The basic information screen now includes attempted suicide and suicide checkboxes when the event type is a collision. Please ensure this is corroborated by the same checkbox on the injury or fatality form. The last piece of information is the name and phone number of someone to contact for additional information regarding the event. You do not need to enter the name of the person if they are already the designated safety contact. If you do enter a phone number, please type only the numbers. If you include parentheses or dots, only part of the number is collected. The basic information screen is also the first screen that the progress bar appears on. This bar shows you how many subsections you have to complete and the progress thus far. This is a snapshot of the basic information screen. First, we will review the details of reporting a collision. The collision screens will vary slightly depending on mode. There are up to four screens or subforms that may appear when reporting a transit collision, the collision event information screen and the collision information screen, the transit vehicle involved information screen, and finally, if another vehicle is involved in the collision, then the other vehicle involved information screen will appear. This is a snapshot of the collision event screen for non-rail modes. 
So the first collision screen is the collision event information screen. For all the modes, this captures information about the number of transit vehicles involved. The answer would always be one unless two transit vehicles from your agency collide. The location of the event, such as the transit facility, roadway intersection, roadway grade crossing, bus stop, etc. What did the transit vehicle collide with, such as another vehicle, person, animal, fixed object, and so on? and if applicable, the number of other non-transit vehicles that were involved in the collision. Here are a few things to keep in mind when reporting collision information. Ramps, streets, highways, and freeways are reported as roadway, not a grade crossing or intersection. Please do not select other and type in highway or freeway. Other is used for parking lots, for example. Grade crossings are locations where rail tracks and vehicular traffic intersect. Bus or service stops is an appropriate location for modes such as motor bus demand response, demand response taxi, van pool, and so on. Parking lot entrances, exits, and driveways are not reported as intersections. Use the roadway, not a grade crossing or intersection location. For a, the collision with selections, a collision with a bicyclist, pedicab, or a person in a wheelchair is reported as a collision with a person. Scooters, mopeds, and motorcycles, school buses, or dump trucks all, all, are all reported as a collision with a motor vehicle. Please do not select other and type in school bus. Collision with a transit vehicle is used when two transit vehicles from your agency collide. If you collide with a transit vehicle from another agency, it is reported as a collision with a motor vehicle. In a multiple impact collision scenario, report the collision with as the first object impacted. For example, a bus collides with a car and then the car hits a building. The collision with selection would be motor vehicle and you would include the damages to the building and that the building was struck in the event description. Let's look at a few examples of how to determine how many other motor, motor vehicles to report. Please do not include the transit vehicle revenue vehicle in this count. If car one cuts off a bus but no contact is made and the bus goes on to hit car two, the number of other vehicles to report is one because only car number two had contact. If car one hits a car two and then car two hits the bus, the number of other vehicles to report is two. Again, both car one and car two had contact. Please note this box is not the total number of vehicles in the collision. It is only the number of non-transit vehicles involved. So please do not include the transit vehicle in this number. As with other events, a non-transit collision must meet a reportable threshold. Here are a few examples. A privately owned vehicle collides with a pedestrian, private vehicle or object in a transit parking lot. A privately owned vehicle collides with another privately owned vehicle on a ferry. A transit non-revenue maintenance vehicle collides with anything or anyone on transit property. On the non-transit collision form, you would include the non-revenue vehicle as another as a other vehicle. The non-transit collision form would appear if you reported a collision that met a threshold, but when asked, were transit revenue vehicles involved in this collision, you selected no. This would be appropriate for reporting collisions on transit property when a transit vehicle was not involved. After the collision event information screen, the collision information screen will appear. This is a snapshot of the first part of the collision information screen. The collision information screen captures information about the conditions at the scene. All modes capture the weather at the time of the collision, whether clear, raining, snowing, etc. 
A no light in the twilight selection is used to refer to both dawn and dusk, but is not full light or full dark out. Please be sure your lighting corroborates the AM PM time you entered in the basic information screen. If the collision occurred in a tunnel or indoor facility, please select artificial lighting. Please note this selection is not used to indicate street lights or lights at the platform. Here are some considerations when reporting the roadway configuration. You would select limited access highway to report an incident on the freeway. A limited access highway has access to limited or in some way. For example, it may not allow pedestrians or bicycles. Please be sure that the selection is consistent with the location chosen on the collision event information screen. So if you reported roadway intersection on the event information screen, be sure to select intersection or grade crossing for roadway configuration. If you choose roadway intersection or grade crossing, the system will generate the two subsections for intersection control and grade crossing control devices, if applicable. The first sub-option is the grade crossing control device. If the event occurred at a grade crossing, choose the signage or signaling present at the crossing. There is an option for no control device if there is no device or sign. Please choose not applicable only if the event did not occur at a grade crossing. The same is true for intersection control device. One of these options will must always be not applicable. The location you select on the collision event information screen must be corroborated on the roadway configuration selection on the collision information form. So if roadway intersection is chosen as the location on the non-rail collision information screen, the reporter must choose intersection or grade crossing. Then in the grade crossing control device area, choose not applicable because this did not occur at a grade crossing. And in the intersection control device, choose the appropriate signage signaling or lack thereof at this location. At this point, we have completed the collision event information screen. The next screen to be presented collects information about transit vehicle involved. One screen will appear for each transit vehicle involved. So if two buses are from the same transit agency collided, you would complete one transit vehicle information form for each bus. The form includes an identifier count and buttons for increasing or decreasing the number of vehicles. This is the non-rail transit vehicle involved screen. The form captures the vehicle type. The vehicle action at the time of the collision when it stopped turning, etc., is captured for all modes. The collision type is captured for all modes. This is the part of the transit vehicle that was hit and is reported from the viewpoint of the transit vehicle. You would also report the actual or estimated speed of the transit vehicle at the time of the collision. The transit vehicle manufacturer, which is chosen from a drop-down list of choices, and the vehicle fuel type for non-ferry modes is also chosen from a list of choices. For non-rail mode collisions, the form will also present the question, was this vehicle towed from the scene due to disabling damage incurred as a result of the collision? Select yes or no accordingly. Let's explore some of the transit vehicle actions, but transit vehicle action options. When the transit vehicle is moving into or out of a scheduled service stop, report the action as either making a transit stop or leaving a transit stop accordingly, and report the transit vehicle speed to indicate the vehicle was moving. Do not choose this option if the vehicle was not moving. If you choose the stopped or parked option, please be sure to report the vehicle speed as zero. The vehicle speed must be reported even if it is zero. This diagram shows most of the impact points which are reported from the point of view of the transit vehicle. Let's look at the options in more detail. Rear-ended means that the rear of the vehicle was hit. The, the rear of the vehicle hit the front of another vehicle. 
excuse me, the um, rear ending means that a vehicle traveling forward hits the rear of another vehicle. Please do not report this action as head-on or other front impact. Side impact means that the transit vehicle was impacted anywhere on its side, including the door, the mirror, or the tires, with the exception of when a side swipe occurs. Other front impact is used when the front of a transit vehicle is impacted, but not when it will be considered head-on or rear-ending. Rear An example would be the front corner bumper hits another vehicle or object while turning, not the bumper on the side at the front. Likewise, other rear impact is used when the transit vehicle is impacted on the rear, but not when it would be considered rear-ended. An example would be if the transit vehicle was backing up and hit a utility pole. Side swipe is used when two vehicles are parallel to each other, going in either the same or opposite directions, and bump and scrape along the sides of each other. Both vehicles will be reported as side swipe. Please note that side swipe cannot be the action chosen when you are reporting a collision with a person. Instead, use side impact. When reporting a T-bone or broadside collision, one vehicle is reported as head-on and the other vehicle is reported as side impact. So in the diagram, vehicle number one, the other motor vehicle, would be reported as head-on, and the transit vehicle, vehicle number two, would be reported as side impact. Multiple vehicle accidents or chain reaction accidents can be a challenge to report. Remember to consider the first impact or collision type in your analysis. In this diagram, vehicle one would be reported as rear-ending. It's doing the hitting which means that vehicle two was rear-ended, which then caused vehicle two to be pushed into vehicle three, the trans vehicle, which would also be reported as rear-ended. For the speed, enter the actual speed of the trans vehicle at the time of the collision. If the speed is unknown, you can use the posted speed for that section of the road, and if needed, adjust the speed based on traffic and or roadway conditions at the time of the incident. Please be sure that your estimated speed corroborates your choice for the transit vehicle action. The manufacturer of the transit vehicle is chosen from a drop-down list of choices, including a selection of other with a place to type the manufacturer. You would also select the transit vehicle fuel type from a drop-down list. The form will also present the question, was this vehicle towed from the scene due to disabling damage incurred as a result of the collision? Answer yes or no accordingly. That covers all the categories for reporting the transit vehicle information. If you indicated on the collision event screen that another vehicle was involved, the other vehicle information screen will appear. This screen gathers information about non-transit vehicles or vehicles involved in the collision. If more than one other vehicle is involved, you will need to complete one other vehicle involved information form for each motor vehicle involved. So for example, a transit vehicle causes a multi-car collision with two autos. Two other vehicle involved screens will be generated and must be completed. This form also includes a vehicle count and buttons for increasing or decreasing the number of other vehicles. This is a screenshot of the other vehicle involved screen for non-rail collision reporting. The form collects the other the type of other vehicle. The form also includes an option for non-revenue rail vehicle. The automobile option would be used for both cars and passenger car vans like a Dodge Caravan, for example. The action or physical movement of the other vehicle at the time of the collision is also collected. Just as when reporting the transit vehicle collision type, you are indicating the part of the vehicle that was hit from the point of view of the other vehicle. The form includes the question, was this vehicle towed from the scene due to disabling damage incurred as a result of the collision? Answer yes or no accordingly. Please select no if the vehicle was towed 
because the operator was taken away of just wanting it towed. It must be due to disabling damage, even though that may only be a flat tire. This concludes the collision information screen. If your event includes an injury or fatality, you will need to complete a screen for each person. This form also includes a person count and buttons for increasing or decreasing the number of people. Person type location categories are divided into two groups, persons outside the vehicle and persons inside the vehicle. So be sure to choose carefully. We often see collision reports where the transit vehicle operator is reported as being outside the vehicle during the collision. Transit vehicle rider is the correct choice for passengers boarding or alighting. The forms also include an attempted suicide and a trespasser checkbox on the injury form and suicide and a trespasser checkbox on the fatality form. Please be sure to select the location and the checkboxes accordingly. You may check both the suicide and the trespasser boxes as needed. Trespassers are people in unauthorized areas typically in facilities. Just as with attempted suicide, if there are police reports, eyewitness statements, et cetera, to account for trespassing, please include the information in the event description. Using the word trespasser or trespassing is very helpful to the analyst. Trespassing events are not reported on the event level and trespassing is not a threshold. Rather, we collect trespasser injuries or fatalities. For example, a person may be trespassing in an unauthorized area of the transit center when they are injured, such as an employee designated area. This is a snapshot of the fatality form. This is a snapshot of the injury form. Please note that there is an option for transit vehicle operator inside and outside the vehicle. If the transit vehicle operator is operating the vehicle at the time of the injury, please make sure to select person inside vehicle. Um, now is time for uh, questions. If you have any questions, please um, ask them in the Q&A box. So let's turn this back over to James. All right, thank you, Stephen. We will now discuss the evacuation threshold in greater detail. Uh, if I can get the screen to change. There we go. All right, evacuations for life safety means that there's imminent danger to all people in that environment. Reportable evacuations are also to the rail right of way. Uh, each evacuation type includes both customer self evacuations or transit or official direction. Evacuations can be part of almost any event type but are least common in collisions. An evacuation requires all passengers and or employees to depart a transit vehicle or facility. These may be for safety or security event. This includes events that occur off property but may affect the transit system uh, and we'll provide an example of that uh, shortly. Um, for example, a gas leak or fire on an adjacent property uh, that causes the RTA to evacuate a nearby station. Um, evacuations are not uh, when a person is removed from vehicle for medical treatment uh, or if a, uh, removing passengers off a vehicle due to a collision or removing passengers from a vehicle to sidewalk due to a mechanical breakdown. Once again, those are not uh, evacuations. This is a screenshot of the non-rail mode evacuation subform. The first question on the evacuation event screen is to confirm this 
that the evacuation was for life safety or for or potentially unsafe conditions. Please do not answer no to the evacuation question. If evacuations uh, are not for life safety, then delete the report and create a new one answering no to the evacuation question on setup screen two. Um, you also need to include a brief description of the evacuation, including the cause. Um, the what was evacuated question is used to indicate what was actually evacuated. One choice would be vehicle vessel, which would mean that uh, the bus or, or vehicle at the time. Do not report the location of the bus uh, or ferry at the time. Uh, and the last question asks if this was a self-evacuation. For example, a self-evacuation is when all passengers get off the transit vehicle without being told to depart. Once the evacuation subform is generated in a report, it cannot be deleted. So if an evacuation is incorrectly included, the entire report would need to be deleted and a new report entered without the evacuation. Similarly, you cannot add an evacuation subform to a report. Reporting fires on the SNS-40 that, that meet one or more major event threshold. To be defined as a fire, the incident must have had fire suppression equipment or personnel involved to contain the fire and must meet a major event threshold. Without these major event thresholds, a fire requiring suppression is reported on the SNS-50 non-major summary report. Arson is reported on screen one as a system security event, not a fire. The presence of smoke, no fire, and no suppression is reported as an other safety event. Uh, here's a screenshot of the fire event details screen. If the fire is in or on the rail vehicle, including the engine, wheel area, or anywhere on the outside, this would re be reported as in or on vehicle. Then you'll report the type or cause of the fire. For the fuel type selection, if you choose the location of the fire as in or on vehicle, then you would report the fuel type of the vehicle. Acts of God are natural and unavoidable catastrophes that affect the transit environment. Select all locations of property damage, injuries, fatalities, and evacuations. You'll be able to choose more than one option. For example, the location should indicate the property or properties that were damaged and not the geographic location, such as the name of the city. This is a screenshot of the Act of God screen. When reporting hazardous material spills, the spill must meet a reportable threshold and have caused imminent danger to life, health, or environment and required specialized cleanup. A couple of examples of what is not reportable as a hazmat event. Oil, brake fluid, etc., from a transit vehicle, most likely not enough fluid to meet a threshold. Uh, if a bleach container carried onto a vehicle breaks open and the vehicle is evacuated due to flames, this is reported as an other safety event because no specialized cleanup was used. This is a screenshot of the hazardous material spill screen. You, will, you see you report the location of the spill and the type of material spilled. There are two categories of security incidents on screen one system security or personal security events, which must meet one or more of the following thresholds. System security events occur on transit property and affect uh, and affects the transit system as a whole. Personal security events happen to individuals on transit property or those boarding or lighting a transit vehicle. This is where you would report suicide or attempted suicide that did not involve impact with a transit vehicle. This is a screenshot of the system security event screen. 
You may notice that there is an other system security event option on this form. This would be to capture security events that do, do not meet any other category. For example, shots fired at or objects thrown at a vehicle. Uh, this is a screenshot of the personal security event screen. Please notice the two selections of suicide and attempted suicide. You will also notice that there's an other personal security event option on this form as well. The final major event type is other safety events. This is your miscellaneous category. These events must meet one of the following thresholds. One or more fatalities, two or more injured, property damage of 25,000 or greater, or an evacuation. Please note you may report an other safety event with one injury if another threshold is met. Here are some examples. An evacuation of a transit property due to smoke, fumes, noxious odors. Any fatality on transit property that is not considered a collision or suicide. We fall, electrocution, etc. Uh, two or more people thrown from seats due to a hard break. Uh, three people injured in an escalator uh, if it has like an abrupt stop. Uh, and then please remember single injury events uh, are reported on the SNS 50 as a non major uh, event. This is a screenshot of the other safety events screen. Um, so at this point, we have completed all of our screens for the reportable event types. Uh, we'll now review saving, submitting, submitting and editing. Um, at any point from the basic information screen on, the system automatically saves your report. So if you close the report without saving or submitting, from this point on, these auto-save reports become pending reports, which are stored as a task on the task menu option when you are ready to complete the report, click on the task menu option and you will see a listing of each task. Major event reports task will appear with SNS 40 in the title. Just click on the task and the system will return you to the screen you're on when you close the report. Complete the report and save and submit. Or if you no longer need the report, you can choose delete instead. Save and submit options appear when you're in view form mode. If you do not see a save or submit button, click on the view form button and scroll to the bottom. Once you click on save, the report is saved. It is given an event number at the top of the report. The report stays open so you may review it. When you submit a report, the report will close and return you to the dashboard. Submitting the report releases the report to the validation analyst for review and comment. It also notifies the analyst that a report has been created otherwise we may never know when it's been created. If we see an unsubmitted report and it is past the due date, we will contact you to submit the report. The system will send the last modified user one email for each report that is returned. After you make a correction, please be sure to save and submit so the analyst is made aware of the change. When reviewing or editing your reports, it is important to learn how to move around the document. Here's a list of the available button tools, though each button may not be available on every form. One shortcut I would like to point out is the Jump To section button. This button allows you to jump to a specific screen instead of using the Next or Back buttons. That Jump To button is how you will also edit reports. The View Form button shows the entire report. For, the, for review and contains the jump to buttons and save and submit buttons. When you open the report, the first screen is the setup summary view. This screen is the only place you can edit the date of the event. Also, if your report does not include any injuries or fatalities, this screen is the only place where you can add them. Then you would click on next, which displays your report in view form mode. At this point, you can continue to use Next to go to each screen, or you can click on one of the Jump To section buttons. The Jump To buttons enable you to edit that section. 
So when you first click Next, you will not be able to edit the report. It, everything will be grayed out, and you will need to click Jump To to edit. As a reminder, Save and Submit only appear in View Form Mode. If there are injuries or fatalities in the report and you need to increase or decrease the number, you can jump to the Injury or Fatality section and use the Add or Delete but Person buttons. If you choose Delete Person, it will delete the person you are currently viewing. Similarly, you can increase or decrease the number of transit or non-transit vehicles in a report by again jumping to the appropriate section and click on Add Vehicle or Delete Vehicle. Be sure to click on Save and Submit after making your changes. If you delete a report that was not requested by your analyst, please notify your SNS analyst. Not only do we need to know why the report was deleted, it saves the analyst from trying to locate which report was deleted when our tracking sheets show a different number than the NTD screen. Uh, that concludes the presentation, and we will answer any questions in the question and answer box. Uh, if you do not get a chance to ask your questions or prefer to ask it in a one-on-one -on -one session, please feel free to contact uh, your SNS analyst or any of us after the presentation. Um, and just, uh, I want to thank you, James. Um, I just wanted to put in one comment regarding, in case you're wondering about that. Uh, lighting option called indoors, changing it from uh, ag from uh, artificial lighting to indoors. Uh, we had thought that that was going to launch by the time we had this presentation, but unfortunately it has not, but it will be coming along soon. So uh, you'll notice that change as soon as it happens. Uh, also, uh, I see that someone just put in a, a question in the quick reference, in, excuse me, in the uh, question and answer section uh, asking about the quick reference guide. They are available on the NTD system. If you uh, go to that NTD, uh, one of the, that link we were talking about, NTD ref, um, resources, I think it says, um, and then you go to the 2019 Safety and Security re, uh, Policy Manual. When you click on the manual, it, it opens up another screen, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see a link to the quick reference guides, and you can download them and print them. Thank you, everyone. I guess um, we'll just wait a few minutes for some more questions. I don't see anyone typing. I hope everybody uh, thinks this went well. Obviously, we instructors need to <laughs> get a handle on it. Well, no, a you know what? It, um, I think there was a lag. Uh, oh, maybe that's it. And I think, I don't know if you want to try for Thursday, but um, maybe, I don't know, if you share the presentation instead of me, but we can talk about this offline. Everybody's yeah, we can talk listening. about that offline. <laughs> Everyone's listening. All right, I'm going to do my Thank wrap you, everyone. up. everyone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks, everyone, for participating in this webinar. Uh, special thank you to Ann, James, and Stephen for their time and their informative presentation. As a reminder to everyone, you will, re you will be receiving an invitation to fill out an ev evaluation for this event. We greatly appreciate your feedback. Um, if you want to put in the comment section how you thought uh, this platform went, Zoom versus our old platform, uh, I would love to hear from you as well. So if you have any more questions, you have the email addresses. Um, it's on the handout. If you scroll back up in the chat, um, the link is there or go back to your email and I guess that's it everyone thank you and have a great afternoon